Welcome back everyone to another Pokemon ROM hacking tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be going over map scripts in the all-in-one binary hacking program Hexmaniac Advance made by Haven. Map scripts can do a lot of things to spice up the gameplay of your ROM hack that can be triggered with certain flags or variables. You can use map scripts to change the map tiles whenever you want, update the weather based on when you tell it to, trigger cutscene events when entering a map, and a whole lot more. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our YouTube channel members for helping make this video possible. Channel members get early access to videos and custom emojis for the comment section and live streams. Becoming a member directly supports the making of these videos. Check it out at the link below. So for our map script tutorial here, I'm using a modified version of my upcoming ROM hack Pokemon Ruby 2, which is based on Emerald, but the same process is done for all the Gen 3 games. With my test map loaded here, to make a map script, we're going to go up to Edit Map Header, and then right down here, we're going to have Add New Script. There are seven map scripts that are used with certain commands to trigger what you want, but these first five out of these seven on this list are the ones that are most commonly used. This Dive Warp map script is only used for the Sealed Chamber in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and the Return to Field script is very rarely used, um, unless you're trying to do something that needs constant updating. The thing I really like about Hexmanic Advance is when you hover over each of the different map scripts, it kind of tells you what they're all used for. In this tutorial, we're only going to be focusing on these first five out of the seven, as these are most likely the ones you'll be using. The load map script is mostly used with setting map tiles. The per frame map script is used for triggering cutscenes as soon as you enter a map. Transition's probably the most common one you're going to be using, as you can use it to set flags, set variables, you can update the weather, and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Warp into map is mostly used for moving around NPCs and having them face different directions and things like that when you want them to. A good example of this is when you're in the Hoenn Elite 4 and you enter one of the maps that does not have a warp, it makes your character face upwards by default. Or let's say I teleport into another map to trigger a cutscene but I don't want my player to be there right away, I can make them invisible right away too. Resume is mostly used for like when you finish a Pokemon battle, especially a static encounter. And let's say you caught the Pokemon and you want them to disappear when you re-enter the map, but if you didn't catch them, a script will run saying the Pokemon ran away or something like that. In this tutorial, I'm not going to be covering every little scenario that you possibly would want your map script to do, but just know certain commands in the game are designed to only work with certain map scripts. Again, we're only going to be going over these first five map scripts out of the seven, as the last two are rarely ever used. I may not be covering every little exact scenario you want your map script to trigger in this tutorial, so the best way to teach yourself is to go into the vanilla ROM and scroll around the different maps and see how the vanilla game implements the map scripts using the different commands. We're going to start this tutorial off with making a load map script, which will change some map tiles when we want it to. This little rock formation is going to form a cave entrance when we tell it to by setting a flag. I put this hiker NPC down here, I'm gonna edit his script to trigger a flag that allows these map tiles to be changed when you enter this map. With his dialog edited and a new flag being set, I went ahead and also added some set map tiles and then the special command to draw whole map view. This means the cave entrance can be updated right away, but we want to edit our load map script to make it so when we return to this place the cave entrance is still there. Before we get started with this load script, let's go ahead in the game and show you what it looks like. Alright, so now let's go ahead and test it in the game. So, here's our rock formation, then we'll go ahead and talk to this uh, NPC here, and we'll run back up and here's the cave entrance. I made this warp just go to Granite Cave that's on Duford Town. When we head back out, there's no cave entrance here, so now we're gonna have to go ahead and edit our load script. Okay, so now let's edit our load script, then we're gonna use an if flag set command, and then have these map tiles trigger. So, if flag set 9e... We'll make it go to sec1, which stands for section 1. Then down here at sec1, and then we'll put a colon, we'll paste the map tiles, and then we can end it here. Now let's test it in the game. Alright, so we talked to the guy, and we got the new cave entrance. And then we'll go ahead and exit here. And there we go, our cave entrance still stays there. Now, I don't know if there's a limit to how many set map tile commands you can run in this script at once, but I'm pretty sure you can do dozens of them. But if you're doing like a major, major map overhaul with these set map tiles, you can also use the set map footer command, but that goes in the transition map script, not the load script. A good example of this is in Pokemon Emerald, when you have Grotta and Kyogre fighting, you can see the water in Sutopolis City is way different. Here they're using a set map footer script, and not a set map tile one. Okay, so the next map script we're going to be using is per frame, and again, this is used to trigger cutscenes. 
Once I add it here, you see we have two different script addresses. This first one it actually is just for the table that points to all the different map scripts you're going to have for the per frame ones, and then here is the script address for the actual script itself. The reason for this is because you can have multiple per frame addresses and it can trigger based on different variables you set. If I go here and add a new table script by pressing it, you see it's not going to add any right away. I don't know why Hexmanic Advance does this, but all you got to do is enter a different map and then go back to it. And then when we head back to the header, you can see now we have two here. We're just going to be using one for this tutorial, so I'm going to delete that one, and then we're going to make it triggered by a variable that we set. So I'm actually going to be running this per frame script in a different little map in the game, but you can just warp to it from this test world that I have. Let's make it so when you enter this map, these Team Magma Grumps will run up to you and then try to trigger a battle or something. I'm going to drag in this random NPC here, and when you talk to him, it's going to change the variable to make them come and battle you. We're going to use the set var command and just make it trigger a var that's going to be set at number 1. We'll make this NPC say, oh no, Team Magma is here. Then it's going to set this variable 4049 to 1. We have to remember that. So, in this warp right above, this leads us to our next map here with the Team Magma grunts. And then for our per frame here, we're going to set this to 4049 and make the value 1. Remember, all your variables in the game are set to 0 by default. I'll drag these grunts down too so they're closer to the entrance. And let's make it so this first magma grunt walks up to you and then triggers a battle. So I'll edit the script here, and then we're going to start with lock all. Then I'll use apply movement for the first NPC. And then let's make him walk down, right, and then down so he's right in front of your character. Then we'll just make it so this grunt ends up battling you. Alright, so I added this little message box that's just going to say, hey, you can't be here, and then it's going to trigger a battle. Then when you beat him in a battle, it's going to set that variable 4049 to 2. That way, once you beat him, then the cutscene will no longer trigger. I put this variable after the battle script because if you end up losing to him, then you can still go back into the room and it'll trigger the cutscene once again. Alright, now we'll go ahead and test that in the game. So, if I enter that little Team Magma base here, you can see the script does not trigger at first because the variable is still set to 0. Then we'll go ahead and talk to this NPC who will set the variable to 1. Then we head back in there. And now he walks up to us and then he goes ahead and triggers a battle. Just remember too, I also made a ROM hacking tutorial about a year ago on how to trigger cutscene events just like this. So you should go ahead and check that video out when you get the chance. Now before I get into the transition map script, let's try warp into map because this is how you can move around the NPCs and make them face different directions. I'm going to make this one triggered by the same exact variable. That way when the variable is set, we'll have these magma people facing in different directions. We'll use the same variable again, 4049, and we'll set it to 1. And these NPCs are number 3, 4, and 5, as you can see in the ID on the top left. And just like Hexmanic Advance tells you, this script is run after the objects are loaded in the game. And that's very important for making these commands work. Let's make it so these three grunts will be kind of on the left and right side when you enter, and then only the first guy will walk up and battle you. So these first three commands here move sprites 3, 4, and 5 to these coordinates, and then these sprite face commands tell them what direction to face to. Now I don't know if this is a problem with uh, Pokemon Emerald only and Hexmanic Advance, but using sprite face up makes them face right, and then sprite face north makes them left. I think it's because Hexmanic Advance is designed to work more with Fire Red, so that's why this might be off a little bit, but you'll just have to mess with them yourself to make them work the way you want. So like I said, the one NPC should be facing the right, and the two other ones should be facing left. Now let's try it out in the game. Alright, so when the variable is set to zero, you, they're all in the same place as normal. Then we'll trigger the variable with this NPC once again. And now when I enter the map, those three people move their positions and the first guy is still activated by our cutscene. It can take some practice to get the script to work the way you want it to, so just keep testing and doing some trial and error. So you can see how these two map scripts, per frame and warp into map, kind of work together. The per frame triggers the cutscene itself, and the warp into map triggers the different positions that you move the NPCs to. Hopefully this is all starting to make sense for you now. Now we're going to use the transition, which is probably the most commonly used map script. So we'll do an easy transition script by setting the weather to rain when a certain flag is set. So we'll add the transition here, and then we'll go ahead and edit it. I'll use an if flag set command. So we'll make it when this flag AC is set, it'll trigger the rain. So, 
just like before, I'm going to add a section 1, add a colon, and then we'll make it set weather rain. Now we need to make an NPC or something that will trigger this set flag right here. So in this house, I'll add this NPC. I'll edit his text to just say it's raining outside. Then we'll go ahead and add the set flag. 0xAC. Alright, now let's go ahead and test this one. So, you can see it's not raining. And then we'll enter this house. We'll talk to this NPC here, and he says, Whoa, it started to rain. Now the flag should be set. So, when we go back outside, it's now raining. Perfect. Now, like it says in the description here, you can also use the transition script to set different flags. So not only let's make it rain, but let's make this little youngster NPC here go away when the rain appears. Now let's give this NPC his own flag, which right here is B-E. I'll go back to the map transition. And then with this weather raining, we'll also add the set flag B-E. So now, as you can see outside, we have that little youngster NPC there. And then we'll enter this house, talk to the old man and set the flag. And then when we go back out, now that little trainer is gone. Again, you can even do this to set different variables, and there's a lot more stuff you can do with transition, but that's just what I'll show you in this tutorial. Now for the last map script, the resume, I'm gonna go in this cave here to show you this example. So the resume script works really well with things such as static encounters. So I'm gonna add this Zangoose here, and then when we're done battling it, the script will trigger based on whether we caught the Pokemon or not. So using Hexmanic Advance's built-in Legendary Static Encounter Editor, let's go ahead and jump into this script. Now you can see here in this script, we have this Battle Outcome Special Command. What this will do is change the variable result based on the outcome of the battle. The number 7 right here means the Pokémon has been caught. So in Hexmanic Advance's own Static Encounter script, if the Pokémon is caught and the variable equals 7, then it'll send you to this next section which will set the flag and make the Pokémon disappear. Alright, so if I go ahead and battle this Zangoose here, and then let's just say I run away from the battle, you're gonna see it's gonna say the Zangoose disappeared. But what if we catch the Zangoose? I wanna make it so when I catch the Zangoose, then the Pokémon will disappear while we enter back into the map. So if you see if I go ahead and catch the Pokemon here, and then I'll speed it up, you're going to see the Zangoose is still there in the overworld. To be honest, it doesn't really make sense that once the Pokemon is inside the Pokeball, that when you enter back into the overworld, the Pokemon is still there. So let's go ahead and modify this script just to make that work. So in the script here, we do have it where it fades the screen to black, and then it hides the sprite 800F, which is the sprite that you last talked to. But I only want this to trigger if you do not catch the Zangoose. So I'm actually going to take these three commands here, and then I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put it right before the message box here. Now the screen will only fade to black if you fail to catch the Pokémon. So now we're going to add a resume command to make the Pokémon disappear if it's caught, and then we enter back into the map. So we'll do the special 2 command as the same with variable result. Then we'll have the get battle outcome. And then we'll do the if variable compare go to script. And the var result equals 7, it'll send you to sec1. Then we have sec1 here with the colon, and we'll make it hide sprite number 1. Alright, so let's test it in the game. First we'll go ahead and battle the Zangoose, and then we'll run away. If I run away, then it says the Zangoose disappeared. But if I go ahead and battle it, and then we catch it... Then, once it's caught in the Pokeball, we'll return to the map, and then you can see the Zangoose has already disappeared. That means our resume script worked perfectly. Now let's say I accidentally knock out the Zangoose and then it faints, but I want it to be able to respawn. Because as you can see, by default, its flag was set, meaning it disappears. So you can see Zangoose is tied to flag C1, and then its capture flag is D2. D2 means we caught it if it's set, but if the flag is clear, that means we did not catch it, and we want it to respawn if we did not catch it. So what's cool about Hexmanic Advance is you can actually just copy this script right here, and paste it into a new transition script. Now what this is doing in our transition is if the flag is clear, meaning we did not catch the Pokemon with this D2 here, then it's going to clear the flag C1, which will allow the sprite to reappear. Alright, so that's all going to make it, so if we catch the Zangoose, then it will not respawn. Leave the cave and re-enter, and the Zangoose is gone. 
But if I battle the Zangoose and I fail to catch it by running away, I can exit, re-enter, and then the Zangoose respawns. This will really help you when you're making static encounters for your ROM hack. Now the resume script is also used for something called the change walk tile command. You can say we have this ashy grass from Route 113 in Hoenn. And when I walk on it, it's not triggering the animation like it should be. That's because that animation is triggered by a set walk tile script, which is only used with the resume script. To make that work, add the resume here, and then we'll go ahead, and then we'll set walk tile, I'm sorry, change walk tile, and we'll make it 1. Now that we have a change walk tile 1 in our resume script, now it'll make this grass animation work. This is also used in Fortree City in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald to make these little bridge tiles animate when you walk on them. And that's pretty much it guys, those are the 5 map scripts that I wanted to show you in this tutorial. These are very basic scripts, you can do a lot more things more in depth than this, but I hope you get kind of the gist of how this all works. Like I mentioned earlier in the tutorial, if you want to teach yourself how to do more of this stuff, just go into the vanilla ROM and kind of mess around with different map scripts that are already present in the game. Then you can get a better understanding of how Game Freak programmed these into their map scripts. Then it'll help you make yours work how you want it to. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. And also, check out the Hexmanic Advanced Discord for any questions you may have. The community there is very helpful. Post-production King Crady here. Really quick, before you go, I wanted to put on screen some commonly used commands and which map scripts they go to. Feel free to pause the screen and check them out. These are commands I commonly found myself using as well as what Game Freak implemented into their games. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. And now, when we exit this cave, the entrance should still be there. And it's fucking not.